so if you understand this uh, uh, transmission line terminated by the open circuited easily understand the transmission line which is terminated by the short circuit and now in that case i am not going to be cover each and every section the speed of this um, part will be um, somewhat higher so let's say uh, transmission line having the source voltage v the transmission line impedance is at c and the uh, it is terminated by short circuit so the obviously the impedance now it will be zero source voltage is v so is ref, uh, reflected v1 and refracted voltage v2 okay so in case of open circuited line the current uh, in last section open circuited line the current at the receiving end must necessarily be zero because the line is open circuited in case of a short circuited it is the voltage which should be zero now the well, there will be some value of the current but voltage across this is zero hence the voltage wave arrive at the end and the energy associated with the now electric field it is going to be transformed into the magnetic field so in 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 case of a open circuited line uh, that uh, energy associated with magnetic field get transformed into electric field energy but there will be opposite in short circuited case okay so when switch is closed at that time voltage wave of magnitude uh, i uh, start traveling towards the shorted end or we can say the receiving end now from that you can see that one half li square is equal to one half cv square and the value of i is nothing but the v upon zc again same we have to consider x is equal to zero x is less than l x is equal to l time t is equal to zero the wave is going to travel in a forward direction so here it is v v v i i i some of the part of the voltage is going to be reflected and here it uh, it is minus v so in that case uh, this should be positive the polarity of voltage and current should be opposite so here now the uh, current should not be zero and that is why the minus i current is not added but in that case the voltage is zero and that is why minus v voltage is added okay so try to understand why this minus v is added in place of a minus i because now the voltage is zero the current has finite value that is why there will be some i plus uh, but uh, the value of uh, polarity of voltage will be a positive that is why it is minus v okay so minus v plus v it will be zero i i it will become 2i after one time constant then uh, from source it will be again v and i and so on so the value of current is going to be increasing in a in a in, in in this fashion so initially it is i then it is 2i 3i 4i and it is going to be increased so on so the entire voltage is wipe out at some time there here you can see it is v then it will be minus e so entire voltage is wiping out at some time as voltage is maintained e at the generator once again and the voltage wave travel from the generator to the receiving end so the voltage and current wave as shown in the figure is seen that the current has increased from 2i to 3i 3i to 4i the distribution at the instant of the first reflected wave the receiving end is all, all this you can see in the figure so each reflection at voltage get reduced to zero but the current build up at a each and e uh, each after each time constant so consequently you can see that the current may theoretically rise to infinity so however however by the uh, you can say the losses in a transmission line or we can say the attenuation due to the presence of a resistance the amplitude of wave front get uh, reduced or we can say diminished so uh, the steady state ohms value we can say it is given by e divided by r and it may be observed that in a long line uh, which is short circuited at the receiving end Uh, the establishment of a short circuit current takes place in a series step and each step corresponding to the new reflection okay so same way you can understand this coefficient for reflection voltage and coefficient for current okay so here um, the reflected voltage is minus v and the reflected current is i okay 
if you want to find the refraction voltage then in that case it will be v1 plus v v1 is nothing but minus v and so v minus v it will be zero and if you want to find the constant co coefficient then divide both this by v so minus v divided by v it will be minus v zero by v it will be zero so this is nothing but the coefficient of reflection for voltage coefficient of refraction for voltage same way if you want to find for current then it will be one and two okay so this coefficient of reflection and refraction for voltage and current in case of open circuit and short circuit transmission line is very important for uh, whatever the examination you are going to be uh, given in a future as far as government examination or if you are going to appear for a gate examination this topic is very important so please try to understand the concept and uh, then to try to solve the examples of this kind of uh, problems and you will get uh, the marks in uh, examination for sure okay so same way now we are going to understand the transmission line which is actually terminated by the impedance which is zl okay so first we have discussed about open circuited then the short circuited now we are going to understand when there is some impedance zl is connected through the transmission line at the receiving end what will be our v1 v2 and v okay so incident wave here it is v v1 is nothing but uh, again it is a reflected wave v2 is reflected voltage wave the zc is the natural impedance of a transmission line now circuit is open at that time the voltage is 2v obviously we have find that the time short circuit it is 2i 3i 4i it is going to be increased and step by step so if you want to find the z thevenin so it will be v thevenin by i short circuit and you you can find easily the value of z thevenin is nothing but the zc only so from this if you want to find the value of v2 so from voltage divider rule you can find v2 is nothing but 2v multiply by zl divided by the total impedance which is zc plus zl okay it is you can easily find from the voltage divider rule if you supplying voltage 2v there will be some voltage drum in a transmission line if you want to want to find the voltage across this zl then it will be source voltage 2v multiplied by zl divided by the total impedance which is zl plus zc so coefficient will be v2 by v so divide this equation by v then v v get cancel and that will be 2 multiplied by zl divided by zl plus zc same way if you want to find the reflection voltage v1 so reflection will be v2 which is refracted minus incident so v2 here it is v2 minus v it will give us zl minus zc divided by zl plus zc multiplied by v and if you want to find the coefficient for reflection voltage then divided by v so v1 by v will be vv cancel zl minus zc divided by zl plus zc same way you can find for current so reflect refracted current i2 is nothing but v2 divided by zl here we have already derived v2 so this divided by zl and you will have the zl and zl will be cancelled so i2 is nothing but 2v divided by zl plus zc okay so 2 multi uh, sorry 2v divided by zl plus zc so just multiply by zc and divide by zc okay here we are going to multiply this equation by zc and divide this equation by zc in that case v by zc is nothing but i so it will be 2 zc multiply by i divided by zl plus zc now if you want to find the refraction uh, refracted uh, coefficient then divided by i so if you divided by i i get cancel and 2 zc divided by zl plus zc zero is coefficient of refraction same way you can find for reflection it is nothing but i2 minus i so i2 minus i multiply by i and you will get coefficient of reflection which is 
minus of zl minus zc divided by zl plus zc so this is uh, easily understandable if you understand first the line which is terminated by the open circuited so how the traveling voltage and current wave is going to be travel to the transmission line so if you understand the concept of open circuited then short circuited which is uh, which is very similar to that only and uh, uh, the impedance uh, line terminated through the impedance or we can say the resistance is also similar to that only so just try to uh, uh, capture all these things and this will be going to understand the concept of a transient in a power system that transient in a power system the fundamental of this uh, will used for the insulation coordination of each and every equipment or uh, insulation coordination of a power system so so fundamental of transient is very important in this case of insulation coordination so i hope this uh, uh chapter uh, that we have this delivered through the video lecture is understandable to you those who are having doubts in any of this topic uh, just contact me in, uh, through the mail or just uh, whatsapp me the whatever the question you are not going to understand thank you so